Hey, it's Malcolm Fleshner reporting for TYT Politics. I'm here in San Francisco at the uh, CNA convention with Bonnie Castillo, who is, what is your title? I'm the Associate Executive Director for CNA and NOC. Okay, and what does that mean? What do you do exactly? Well, I'm a registered nurse, so you should know that, and I do advocacy work for registered nurses throughout the United States, and we have nurses from 27 states here today, and nurses from Korea and Canada. All right, so we're going to, Bernie Sanders is scheduled to speak behind us, as you see here. Uh, he's going to talk about Medicare for All, which has been the signature program that he's been touting for months now. He's introduced in the Senate. Uh, about a third of the Democrats in the Senate have co-sponsored the bill. Uh, are you surprised by the groundswell of support that Bernie's been able to get, considering Medicare for All, single payer, have been virtually non-issues in the national media? Well, I think it's a result of the incredible campaign that Bernie engaged in with all of his supporters that we raised this to be a prominent national issue, health care as a human right. So it is part of the national narrative. And now when we're uh, on the eve of this Graham Cassidy, which is truly uh, brutal, we need nurses understand that you don't just identify a problem, you have to have a solution. And we believe Medicare for all, single payer, is the solution because it's the only solution that covers everybody and leaves no one out. We know that in other countries they've been able to do this. There's no reason why we can't get this right and cover everybody. Yeah, that's one of the jokes we say, tell us that uh, uh, American exceptionalism when it comes to health care means everyone can have it, it except us. Right. So, but as a nurse, what do you see on the ground on the day-to-day -day, uh, working in the, you know, on the front lines of medical care, the failings of the American medical system and the, uh, the health insurance system that provides for the majority of Americans but leaves many people, even with Obamacare, out in the cold? It's heart-wrenching. It's heart-wrenching because what we see is a massive amount of suffering by our patients and entire families devastated, financially devastated, not to mention, obviously, the physical uh, the physical fallout of not having uh, secure health care, not being able to go, afford to go to your physician uh, on a regular basis to have the preventative care that you need, or if you're afflicted by a chronic illness, not to be able to get the ongoing care. These are real people. People. This is people's lives. We're not talking about inanimate objects. We're talking about human beings that are suffering the consequences and need to have relief. Not only relief, but really they need to have a comprehensive remedy. And that remedy is having, ensuring that everybody has access to comprehensive universal, a, un a high standard of health care. We know, I mean, as nurses, this is what we do. We train to do this. We want to do this. We do not want to be complicit in the denial of care to anyone, and in fact, we won't. So that's why we're in this fight. We are going to fight to ensure that every single one of our patients and every single one of our communities is covered. We can't leave people out. That's just inhumane. We, we know, we see them, we see people making choices between food and medication. We see them making, having to make these choices for their children. Their most, their, their children that, you know, have, they have such anxiety about taking their child when the child is sick with, you know, maybe a high fever, um, you know, or, or other symptoms and literally being afraid to take them to the to the doctor to get the care they need. That's just that that is just that is sinful. That well, I, I wonder about when the Republicans are putting together this kind of bill that's going to potentially throw 32 million people uh, who are going to lose coverage potentially. And think about what happens in those those situations where in the hospital as a nurse when you're not just talking about uh, possible medical care for people who are suffering but also having to discuss their financial options and how what they can afford as if they're buying a car it seems outlandish that that would be a, a system that anybody would want to support it's inhumane that's what that is it's inhumane and it goes against every every grain, every fiber, every cell in our body. As a registered nurse, we are advocates. We are advocates for everyone and to ensure that everybody has this basic fundamental need, healthcare security in their lives. For, you know, I mean, our, this 
It is, uh, you know, the fact that we're here right now having to fight for this is, uh, in, a, in, in you know, when all the other industrialized nations have been able to figure this out and provide for a more humane system, this is, you know, this is just un, unacceptable and we are not going to give up until we are able to achieve it. So that, you know, for us at this convention um, and this morning we heard from uh, uh, Gavin Newsom, who's going to be, we believe, is going to be the governor. Uh, the next governor of the state of California has committed to ensuring that every single Californian has health care. And now we're waiting to hear from Senator Sanders, who we know put this issue in the forefront for all of us. And we are uh, absolutely 100% behind him and advancing this issue because we know that it's really, it is the most important issue of our time. So uh, looking forward then, speaking politicians and of politics, <laughs> looking at the 2018, 2020 elections coming up, do you feel that single payer or Medicare for all or some form of universal coverage uh, should be a litmus test for all Democrats? Absolutely, absolutely. Healthcare is a human right. And if they can't commit to that, if they can't commit that every single person is deserving of health care, what does that say about them? What kind of human beings are they? I mean, how? why should that be so hard? I know, the funny thing is we're just saying it just about Democrats because Republicans we write off as, but they, they shouldn't be written off necessarily I, either because I, if someone like Senator Murkowski or Susan Collins uh, is not going to support the Lindsey Graham, uh, Bill Cassidy uh, bill, then maybe there's some possibility that they could support single payer also. I mean, which side are they on? Are, I mean, if you're saying that there's someone out there that doesn't deserve health care, who are you advocating for? I mean, essentially, they're standing uh, with the insurance. They're standing with the insurance industry, and they're actually representing their interests. I mean, that's, you know, that those are not the kinds of elected officials that we need. We have plenty of those right now, and it's clear that the insurance companies are regulating them instead of the other way around and bending them to their will. We're done with that. You know, we, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> All right, so thank you, Bonnie. So listen, Democrats if, you know, who are not supportive of single payer, Bonnie and the nurses are coming for you, so you better watch out. Thank you so much for talking to me. Appreciate it. Yeah.